I told you that I could accurately predict a sequence of 10 coin tosses. You'd be skeptical, and you should be. But here's a way to create the illusion that exploits several of the laws of improbability that we discussed earlier. First of all, let's calculate the probability of an arbitrary sequence of 10 coin tosses. The chance of a coin landing heads or tails is one half, right? Now, one of the rules we learned in the tutorial on reasoning with probabilities is how to calculate the probability of a conjunction of independent events. So let's imagine tossing two heads in a row, or two tails in a row. To get this, we just multiply the probabilities of each of the events separately. And we get one half times a half, which is equal to one quarter. But of course, this is the same for any combination. If we swap out the heads and tails in the second toss, we have this sequence, with a head followed by a tail on top, and a tail followed by a head on the bottom. But the calculation is the same, since these are independent coin tosses. With each successive coin toss, you reduce the probability of the resulting sequence by one half. That's the general rule. So for any sequence of 10 tosses, the probability of that sequence occurring is this. 0.5 times 0.5, 10 times, which is just under 1 in 1,000. It's 1 in 1,024, exactly. So a sequence of all heads has the same probability as a sequence of all tails, which has the same probability as a sequence of alternating heads and tails, which has the same probability as five heads followed by five tails, or this more typical looking sequence, which looks more like the sort of sequence you'd get if you actually toss a coin 10 times right now. I say this is a more typical looking sequence, but it's not a more probable sequence. This specific sequence of tosses is just as unlikely as getting all heads or all tails. Now we agree that it would be very unlikely if I were to write down the sequence of tosses in advance, and then on the next trial, get exactly the sequence of tosses. But here's a way of creating the illusion of predictive power. We'll start with a smaller case to illustrate the point, and then scale up. Let's imagine that these eight dots represent individual coin tossers. You can imagine that they're all in separate rooms, or at their respective homes. All they see is the coin in front of them. Now my job is to predict the sequence of coin tosses that they are going to generate. I send them an email with a prediction, and then they go ahead and toss their coin to see if it matches. For half, I'll predict that their coin will land heads, and for the other half, I'll predict that their coin will land tails. The blue and red letters represent my predictions for each of the coin flippers. Next, they each go ahead and flip their coin. A blue circle represents heads, a red circle represents tails. So the first flipper got a tail, the second flipper got a head, and so on. We can compare my prediction with the outcome, and on this round we have a match for five out of the eight coin tosses. Now what I'm gonna do is ignore the misses and focus only on the hits. I'm gonna issue a new prediction for this group. Here's my new prediction. I'm just randomly assigning heads or tails. It's an odd number in this case, so I predict heads for three of them and tails for the other two. Now they toss their coins, and this is what they get. I've got a couple of hits again this round, the first and the last. So now I give my new prediction just to these two. I'll predict heads for the first one and tails for the last one. They each toss their coin, and what do you know? I got a hit for both of them. Let's do one more prediction, and now we're down to one winner. Now obviously everything we've done is just exploiting random chance, but for the winner, what he or she sees is four successful coin predictions in a row. By chance alone, if you toss four coins, the chances of getting this sequence are one in 16. Now, did I predict the sequence? It looks that way to the coin tosser, but I didn't write down this specific sequence in advance and say, this is what player two is gonna get. What I'm really doing is generating predictions for all possible sequences of coin tosses, and then labeling the winning sequence after the fact. Now, how can you predict a sequence of 10 coin tosses? It's easy, you just start with more coin flippers. Specifically, let's start with 1,024 coin flippers. Each of those dots is a coin flipper. I randomly assign a prediction to each one and eliminate the ones who failed to match my prediction. Here's the result of the first coin toss. On average, you'll cut down the size of your field by half with each toss. Here's two, here's three, here's four, our surviving coin tossers is getting smaller now, but there's still a ways to go. Here's five, six, seven, eight, nine, and with the last coin toss, we have a winner. 
This person, the last remaining coin flipper, would be truly amazed that I could successfully predict the sequence tails, heads, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, heads, heads, tails. What are the chances of getting this particular sequence? 1 in 1024. Now, this particular sequence of coin tosses is an unlikely event, so my ability to predict it seems shocking. But we can use this example to illustrate some of the probability assumptions that we mentioned earlier, the ones that we need to consider when we encounter what seem to be highly unlikely events. Looking at David Hand's list, there are three that seem to apply. The law of inevitability, the law of truly large numbers, and the law of selection. The law of inevitability says that when you've listed all of the possible outcomes of a random event, at least one of the outcomes has to occur. It's inevitable. In this case, when I gave predictions for each of the coin tosses, I was basically generating a list of all the possible outcomes. So for each round, there had to be some winning combination. What Hand calls the law of truly large numbers may be a bit confusing to those who've done some statistics, because there is a very important principle of statistics known as the law of large numbers. But this isn't that law. This principle is a bit of a play on that wording, but it's saying something different. This law says that even if the probability of an event is very small, if you're given enough opportunities for the event to occur, then the probability of observing that event increases. And if the opportunities become truly large, in his words, then the event becomes almost inevitable. In our case, we exploited this principle by starting out with a large number of coin tossers. With each of them tossing coins, it becomes increasingly likely that a particular sequence of tosses will be observed somewhere in the set. The law of selection is also in play here. The principle says that if you're allowed to characterize an event after it's occurred, then you can make the probability of that event very high. In fact, you can make the event certain. For example, if I'm given a bullseye target and try to hit it with a dart, then there's a good chance I'll miss. But if I'm allowed to throw the dart first and then run up and draw a bullseye target at the location where the dart hit, then I can guarantee that I'll get a bullseye because I've defined what a bullseye means after the fact. In our case, the sequence of coin tosses that survived our process of elimination was defined as the predicted sequence after the fact. So it was inevitable that my prediction would be successful. Anyway, this gives you an idea of the sorts of factors that can influence our judgments about randomness and coincidences. In David Hand's book, he uses this case to illustrate how the illusion of stock picking skill can be fabricated. It's the exact same setup, except instead of coins, you're looking at the price of a stock. Let's assume that in a given week, the price will either go up or go down. And this is something you can predict. Either the stock price will go up or it'll go down. So you pick a stock and give your prediction to 1,024 people. For half of them, you predict the price will go up. For the other half, you predict it'll go down. Each week, you'll have a set of winners. And you repeat the process just like we did with the coins. So that by the end of 10 weeks, you'll be down to just one person. And that person will think you've successfully predicted how the price of the stock would change for 10 weeks in a row. If that person thought that they were the only one receiving your predictions, they would think either that you are extremely lucky, or you have some amazingly effective algorithm for predicting stock prices, or that you're getting inside information. And in fact, none of these is the case. It's not a matter of luck that someone wins the lottery. That's inevitable. All you're doing is exploiting the fact that some sequence of coin tosses is inevitably going to survive this process, and labeling that the predicted sequence after the fact.